Hallo. Hallo. Hey. Hallo. Wani. Hi. A I have really uh, joined uh, 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 AWS. I am the SDM here reporting to Nias. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Is, uh, is my pronunciation okay? Uh, call, call you Wani or? No, oh, yeah, you're perfectly okay. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> Maybe I, I, I will open the video. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Wani. Nice to meet you again. <laughs> nice to meet you too. Yeah. Is my pronunciation right? E? Is that? Uh, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Pritesh. Uh, hey, Pritesh. Hi. 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 I think Milin said uh, he was out of office today, but he said he's going to join this meeting. So we'll wait for. Um, yeah. yeah, we will wait. Uh, uh, I think Is David will... from our side will not join. Is she will join you. Sorry, Pritesh. Uh, will she will join? Shui, I think so. Okay. I think so. Yeah, I, I, I saw your uh, agenda item about this okay. refactory. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think she will join. And the female. Yeah, he's here. She will join. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Hi, uh, I'm Vanero. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm sure It's Vani. Bunny. Okay, hi, Vanny. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm not sure which uh, times are you in, but uh, good afternoon or good evening or good morning. <laughs> it's it's good night here. It's the East yeah, okay. Coast. So it's 8 p.m. Yeah. Hey, hello, Milin. Hey, just joined. Hello, Milin. <laughs> this works. Are we going to wait uh, for anyone else? I know Samir is in UK, so he'll be sleeping it must be like midnight or something it's way past midnight probably yeah uh, okay Pitesh is here yeah I think Niaz might join later I think we can start um I think so okay I see a few issues uh agenda items yes um I didn't get a chance I to did this I was on the go on Pitesh yeah, I think I have the first one there. The agenda item. So yeah, do we wire... want to... Uh, actually, before we get into that, the, there were a couple of items uh, being discussed last week that we didn't close. I think one was uh, the algorithm names that Shiwe published. And the other was the returning certificate chain and the sign passing the digest versus payload in the uh, in the generate signature plugin API. Um, let's try to cover those two. Pritesh, you can go. You, you are at the first item. Let's go through that. Oh, but just yeah, want to make sure we leave time for all of those. Do you want to cover them first or do you want to go with this first? I can cover them first. I think they, they are yeah. probably more important than this one. Yeah, makes sense, yeah. All right, um, let me let me go to the pull request. Give me just a second. Okay, here's the first one, I'll put it in chat. Uh, related to key names. I put in some feedback there. Uh, she will responded on that. Um, yes, for the uh, yeah for the names, uh, for uh, key names and uh, for the 
uh, hash algorithms, uh, I think we agree uh, on yep. the name. Uh, uh, for the signature algorithms, we, we need to decide. <laughs> so, so here's my, um, my feedback there. My, uh, kind of my only criteria was that we, we control this spec. Uh, this is a plugin spec for yes. plugin authors. And we want to make sure that like, I think the general principle we're following elsewhere is also that use verbose names. And I think what I can't get from, which is why I favor the full names for algorithms. Uh, I saw your feedback on that. So the, so I don't want it to match exactly how it is in the RFC, like the RFC changes the case, et cetera. But at least it is a full algorithm name the RSA, the particular variant, PESS, uh, PKCS1, et cetera, right? Uh, version 1.15, uh, including the hash algorithm. I'm, I'm okay with slight variations in it. It doesn't have to match the RFC. I'm just pushing for the names to be verbose because like, for example, the, the ES, PS, and RS, uh, like, frankly, I'm not sure like how those names were decided in JWS or uh, like what they, what the expansions of those abbreviations mean. And I feel we have the freedom to control the naming here and I'm leaning towards verbose names. Uh, using ES, uh, RS, PS, the, uh, those names, uh, I mean, those names comes from uh, standards like uh, uh, RFC for JWS and RFC for COSI. Uh, I mean, it's pretty standard and uh, we can refer uh, the uh, customers to those standards to understand more. Uh, and right, I, but they have, to, they have to do a translation, right? They have to then refer this table. And I, I think what I'm pointing towards is, I don't know why JWS or COSI named that that way. Like what does PS or RS exactly convey instead of just having the whole RSA, SSAPS or RSA, SSA, PK, ACS, one, V1.5. Uh, actually, if they know crypto, then definitely they know what is RSES, whatever. But if they they don't know crypto, then they think, okay, it's just a, or is a name? And they just call it, and uh, they will never know what's, uh, what's the internals. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm saying, frankly, I don't know how, how JWS decided to name it PS versus RS. What is, what is the naming convention that they follow? And like having the full name really makes it clear what algorithm and what they refer to. Um, yeah, that, that's my only feedback. I know I'm kind of stuck on yeah. naming there, but the only criteria is again, I, like like you gave examples there, KMS uses this and Azure Key Vault uses yeah. this. This is yeah. pretty much irrespective of what any provider uses, like the general, just trying to make it easier for the plugin authors and anybody else, right? Yeah, uh, uh, I, think, I, think, I think JWS use shorter names because they just want to make the JWT shorter. So they use the shorter yeah. name. Like, yes, yeah, I agree, I, I agree. That, that probably is the rationale there. I think RS and R stand for RS and S stand for Shaw. Similarly for HS, H stand for HMAC and S stand for Shaw. That's my interpretation. <laughs> so that's what I, I <laughs> sorry, I, 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 I haven't read it anywhere. That's what I can see here. Like RS means RSA, ES means uh, E for stand for elliptical, S stand for right. Shaw. That's what I, yeah. Right. And it's the same, yeah. Um, and also, I have a question here uh, because uh, uh, because uh, for the all reasons, um, uh, yeah. Uh, why do we need to pass the signature algorithm to the? Uh, I mean, to the plugin. Uh, to the plugin. Yeah, uh, should the plugin decide the algorithm just uh, by the key type and the key size? So the way we have it is, uh, that's a good question. Good. Let me pull the spec. It's been, so we have the describe call, which gives you the, 
uh, key spec, key value and strength. Yeah, and based on that, okay. So be, because we define these these mapping, that is why we pass it. So let me go to signature. signature. I, think I can take a stab. Describe should, yeah. should only describe what kind of key it is. It shouldn't describe signature algorithm. It's basically no, it's, like, no. It's basically it's, the the mapping of key to algorithm is part of the signature spec that we define, right? So let yeah, me put the link. I think it's plugin only passes a key type and the length, something yeah. like that. Like it's RSA key of length two fifty six. Then based on that, notation converts it to a signing algorithm. Yep. So that that particular table, Shiva. Yeah. There's, there is a mapping, the second yeah. link, there's an algorithm selection mapping, right? Yes. This is defined by notation. Yeah, just by the, by, by the notation. So uh, so I think all the plugins should uh, uh, do that conversion in their implementation, right? So, so uh, that's why I'm confused why we need to, first, why we need to pass the hash algorithm to the, to the plugin. Because we already passed the key stack to the plugin, and the plugin can decide the hash algorithm and the signature algorithm based on the key stack. And also, uh, because the notation uh, passed the uh, request to the uh, plugin, so the notation must know what's the expected signing algorithm. So uh, they don't; uh, it, it doesn't need to uh, get the signing algorithm from the plugin, but just use the uh, expected the signing plugin to verify the signature. So it I'm not sure need... why we need to uh, just return the signing algorithm in the response and sending the hash algorithm in the request. Sure, it, it, it the current way just simplifies it, which is we have the describe call, which still tells what the key, uh, what a given logical key name maps to the algorithm key type and the key strength. And notation holds the mapping on its side and does the conversion and says, generate signature, here's the algorithm to use, uh, signature algorithm to use. You can have the same mapping on the other side. It just requires every, every plugin implementer to implement that mapping on their side. I think it also gives the benefit. I, I haven't thought about this from like a crypto agility perspective. Having the, having the mapping centralized in notation allows you to extend it in future probably more easier. And it, is, is, it isn't really required for every plugin implementer to know that mapping. They just have to, currently they just have to know. Yeah. They have to do two things. They have to tell notation what the key type is. And then they have to know what algorithm to use. They don't have to code the mapping in on their side. Uh, yeah, so uh, I also uh, thought about that, uh, but the current uh, protocol does not, uh, so does not pass signature, uh, I mean, signing algorithm to the plugin. Uh, the plugin still need to decide the signing algorithm by its own using the map. Because as you can see uh, in the request, uh, only key spec and hash algorithm are passed to the uh, plugin. For example, for ISA keys, there are two kinds of signing algorithms like uh, ISA, uh, ISA PSS or ISA uh, PKCSV.5. Uh, right. So there are two possible uh, algorithms. Uh, which one to use? The plugin does, know, does not know that. So uh, the plugin still need a map on its side. Actually, you're right. I'm looking at the generate signature right now. The input has plugin, sorry, the input has key spec. It doesn't have algorithm. And yes. the response has like, signing algorithm. Yes. Uh, we can, I mean, this is this is going beyond the point, which is naming this. Yeah, but yeah. I'm, I'm open to look at this again and simplify it. Yeah. Um, uh... I think having the mapping on the notation side probably will make it simpler. Yes, right. But, but I need I need to put more thought on it. Yes. Okay. So um, um uh, here's a point. <laughs> uh, if we remove the hash algorithms and signature algorithms, we don't need to post up our names. Uh, if we uh, 
uh, replace the hash algorithm in the request with sign algorithm, then we don't need to bother about the hash algorithm names. And we we'll probably need, uh, have to, or can can use the, uh, the, the algorithm name same as the AWS KMS, right? We don't need yeah, to, it's not, to go yeah, to yeah. a Python. <laughs> right, it's not, uh, I wouldn't say those are KMS names because if you see the AWS KMS names, they have a, going back to the example that you put in, right? They have underscores. Yes. We are going to use that. Well, what I mean to say is, this is not based on what a particular provider has. Every plugin implementer has to do a enum conversion or name conversion anyway. We, we might have a different casing. We might have a different separator like underscore versus dash. Uh, I like I wouldn't characterize it that way. I think the the guiding principle is, and probably when KMS also defined this enum, the guiding principle was that use verbose names, which is which is again what we are trying to do here. Also, I think one thing like having the algorithm from notation is like you can transparently upgrade the algorithm. If, let's say. If we were using PKC, uh, RSA, PKC is 1.5 and there was a vulnerability found there, we can just transparently update the algorithm in a notation library to PSS and get away with that. If we don't have- Yeah, that, that, yep. uh, yeah, that probably is, is a possibility, but I, I would uh, I would think about it more before yeah. we call that out, yeah. Shivet, do you, do you have any other feedback? I think I think generally having the verbose names is a better and like like we are not size restricted or anything else similar to what JWS's goals might be. Yeah. Um, okay. Um... So, Milin, that's two different topics, right? For the. Uh... For the clarification, one is the name names of the verbos itself. Whether we yeah, have we have that direction. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we have other issues, a uh, couple of other issues to to cover that 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 is talking about like right uh, the input sign. whether it is uh, key type and algorithm both needs to be there and also as you said about mapping those right on the notation side or not really yeah i think that yeah that's a separate issue and i i think yeah, we haven't two different tagged things, it. those right? are like optimizations on these on that interface itself okay shiva does that sound good we can we can move to the next issue uh, yes yeah, so uh um so uh, anyone else have comments on that? Uh, should we use uh, short names or should we use verbose name for, for this one? And uh, um, uh, by the way, uh, if we use the verbose name, uh, we still need to use a shorter name for the uh, variable names in the Go Gola language uh, because we uh, they are because we just cannot use the verbose name for variable names. It's not readable. It doesn't have to be the same uh, separators or like, for example, I'm trying to type in something here. Uh, like, and again, I am not the best person to make suggestions. You, you can reduce it to whatever level seems, uh, seems proper based on Golang conventions. Um, and I and I think the the difference is in I mean you you'll also have comments in there which will which will specify what what those are. We don't have because we just have support for PSS right now, right? Yep, we don't support. I, yeah, I picked up the. Well, we'll, uh, yes, we only support PSS. I think let's iterate on this. If if you can put something which is more descriptive than the JWS one, and then we can debate on it. 
um, prob we probably just need a um, yeah because the follow plugin protocol uh, is just just defined by us. Uh, we can define anything. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, but but just well, I want to warn, warn that. Uh, uh, if we de define something like this, non, uh, this on reason, then we are not according to any specs. I mean, and uh, not any uh, IFC specs. Uh, we are define our, our own. I think which is which is okay, right? This this is it. It doesn't have to exactly match, but the name should be clear enough that you can go to a RFC or anywhere else, a reference, and search that name and get to the detail. Okay, sure. Uh, yeah, uh, I will update those names with more robust names and just iterate on this uh, PRs. Cool, sounds good. Yeah. Um, I think let's talk about, there's one related to, um, passing the, Passing the certificate chain. Yeah, okay, I got that. I think Pritesh and you have better context here. I will, I, I pinged it. I'm looking at the last few comments. I haven't looked at the, uh, I think you and Pritesh also had some other discussion here, which isn't captured in the issue. But I, I, I kind of agree with Pritesh. The, the key ID, even though we say it is ID, uh, like it can be numeric, alphanumeric, the intent was that it is a unique unique name slash identifier. And, and probably like it's also a logical name. It doesn't have to match to a specific key. Like, like for example, a public key, uh, a public key. The, the key pair behind that logical key can be static or can be rotatable based on whatever implementation a particular provider support, supports. That, that was the intent of key ID. It doesn't convey anything related to whether the uh, actual key pair behind it is, is a constant key pair or, uh, or something that can be changed. Um, yeah, but for me, it's weird because a, a key I should, it should uniquely identify a key, right? And, 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 we, and we cannot change the identifier key. If they change, then it, ha it should have a new key ID. So these key IDs can be like as simple as like, I can name the key. It's called my, my author key or my admin key. And there may be benefit in having those keys rotatable for for some specific like yeah. if you make that assumption that they are static i think it will it might restrict some particular um particular use cases like i I'm, I'm not sure why why we would make that assumption yeah because it's called key id uh, if we, if uh, if the key id is not uh, unique then we should rename it which well, is not it, it, is, it is unique in notation config or in notation boundary. What it refers yeah. to might not be unique. So for example, uh, a, a key like, for example we, or we cannot even control yeah. that. The thing is we cannot even control it. Let's say key ID refers to a key on my host. Next day I decide and I update, I copy paste a new key there on my host and still that key ID points yeah. to that key. Yep. Yeah, but, we can't, uh, yeah. We cannot even control that. So the key ID is completely based on what a plugin provider gives, right? Yeah, but, but for the invoker, they assume that, okay, because it's called key ID, it must be unique. Uh, they don't know the detailed implementation of a, a certain plugin. So that's the common sense. We can, we can name it differently if, if we want. I think what I, what I, what, what it needs to convey is uh, that it it points to a key. So, like for example, whoever is the provider, uh, or HSM, or 
uh, cloud-based service, et cetera. It's a logical name. Like for HSM, yeah. it might be a particular slot. So the key key behind yeah. it, I, I don't know if HSM support those, but it is just pointing to a logical slot, et cetera. So if it's right. logical, then we should call it a key name instead of key ID. We could, I'm not uh, kind of hung up on the ID. The ID part of it was that it is unique in the scope of whoever is providing the key. And if, if it seems like name conveys the same thing, that it is a unique thing in the set of keys available through a provider, um, I'm open to thinking more about that and we, we, we could do that change. Um, I'm, I'm open, I want to hear feedback from others on this. So <clears throat> do we have an option of just calling it ID? Because key ID is used under other contexts, like there are client tools that like PKI and Ubuntu, dash dash key ID, they use that all over the place. So if, you, if it's just a document element in JSON, uh, and just an ID is probably something, or do you want to call it something because key name is key, also key the, the question. Is, yeah, go ahead. I can give context there. So, so under config, signing keys, signing keys dot JSON. There's a list of keys, right? Right. Probably their ID would be okay, but when right. you are referring on the CLI, you say notation sign dollar image minus minus key ID something, right? So that key is important there. We could change it to key name. Uh, probably that, I mean, that that works too. The ID just gives you the uniqueness, but I, I understand the confusion that, that it might cause. Yeah, I, I think the, the, what you say, the key pair key ID is what's kind of getting confused with this concept. I totally understand that it's just a, I, like a unique identifier. You want to valid, like you want to kind of store something and then look up using that, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, again, I'm not going to push back even if we, let it as key ID. I think she has strong opinions, but uh, if if that's the only thing that we can come up with, then I think it's just vote for something and go with it. Like pick one. It's not the not the hill yeah, that I would like. <laughs> yes, I think I'm okay with key name. I'll I'll think more about it. Uh, the like I said, the the it's a logical name slash ID, unique in the scope of whoever is providing this set of keys. I think key name also conveys pretty much the same thing. Um, Shiva, would you prefer key name? Ritesh, I wanna hear if you have any other feedback. Okay, here. I think the, the, the PR was different and we have digressed from the discussion. The PR was not about key ID or key name. Yep, I know it was about returning the certificate chain yeah. and then, then it got into this yeah. aspect of, can the key change, right? Well, I'm I'm fine with both the name, either the ID or name. But like, yeah, both so looks fine. Okay. Uh, if we change the key ID to key name, I can close this PR. <laughs> really? Okay, sounds good then. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's do. No, I, no, 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 no. I I I don't understand that because this change was return certificate chain in describe key, right, rather than in generate signature. Yes. Uh. Yes. Uh. Uh. Yeah, but uh, yes, so uh, this PI is to uh, put the specific chain uh, from the general signature to the describe key. And uh, uh, the major debate here is that for key rotation. So uh, uh, pretty uh, states that we need to do transparent key rotation. Uh, that's why we need to put the uh, specific chain in the generate signing, uh, generate signature command. Uh, if we put uh, the uh, certificate chain in the describe key, then we cannot do um, transparent key rotation. And yeah, uh, yeah, I think I think yeah. the feedback I would give is uh, I think those points are correct, but they probably also I I think the that's that's a characteristic of a particular key provider like some key providers may have rotatable keys, but I see issues where uh, in some key providers, the, the key is static 
and then the generate signature doesn't give you the certificate chain, but a describe key gives, there's a separate describe key or similar API, which will give you certificate chain. And like in, in some cases, uh, like there'll be API limits, like describe key may have different API limits than generate signature. I, I feel if we, if today we had 10 different key providers, some of them would prefer in describe key, some of them would prefer in generate signature based on how they implement their APIs. I think that that probably is the end uh, kind of what it looks like. And notation probably says, I just want a certificate chain by the end of this interaction. I, I don't care whether it's through describe key or generate signature, give me through one of them. And that that is that is good enough to assemble the signature. I mean, I, uh, the TPS limit can easily be overcome by just writing it to a host, writing a file to a host, by describe key command. Like yeah, it can be. It can be, it can be again. again and again. It's it's a highly cacheable thing. Then if you just cache it and avoid that, I'm just trying to avoid like multiple forks here. Right, you can cache it, but then but then how would you know when when it got rotated? Same thing. You call describe key again. You check, uh, you check it locally. That's what I'm saying. Like if, if it has to be described key, then you can call describe key at the cadence which you normally would do, and check your keys in describe key command. That requires you to call describe key every time, right? No. Think, okay. Just so I, basically, I'm saying that like in other approach where you get certificate from describe key, how will you update the key? The similar. Maybe maybe maybe, maybe that provides. I mean, I'm saying there can be providers which don't support changing the key. Yes, in same case, you don't need to update. You just cache it once and it's done. Right. Or just and write it on a disk and you have it a hard-coded value. Right. I'm saying the flip case where you do support rotatable keys, but the but you you may not have, may not have certificate like. Are you saying if it is rotatable keys, generate signature API will always return you certificate chain? Maybe still you have described key return the chain, right? I mean, I'm saying like you can always have have it from this. I'm saying always return the certificate chain. I'm saying either so of the calls just... return a certificate chain. I think that that keeps uh... it. All right. I think I think what I did want to ask is Shiva for the Azure Key Vault integration, what what works works for you? I'm sure like every provider we integrate with will have different uh, kind of rationale on what is what seems to be a better API for them. Yeah, for, for Azure Key Vault, uh, the key ID is unique. So there's no rotating key behind the, the Azure Key Vault. If we rotate the key, the key ID will, be, will change. Okay, that, that sounds good, but like returning the certificate chain, are you able to return the certificate chain in generate signature? Uh, I think it's different call. <laughs> so like it's a different call than the describe key, whatever you would do for yes. describe key. So, uh, so the implementation will be like, okay, when you call the describe key, we will uh, call the certain APIs to get certificates and the key details. And for generate signatures, uh, we just generate call the call the sign API and uh, uh, return uh, for the current protocol. We return the signature and uh, the certificate cached in the local. Yeah. Okay. So my my suggestion is this: we can keep the API as is right now. Generate signature must return certificate chain. If there are variations that we see based on integration with other key providers. We can make generate signature certificate chain optional and also add an optional to the describe key. That way providers have the freedom of based on their like TPS limit, caching strategy, whatever, they can return it in either. I think from notations perspective, by the end of this interaction, it just wants a certificate chain. Does that sound good? And it's going to verify the signature anyway. So if there is mismatch, it will detect it. Yeah. Uh, so uh, by the way, do we have a, a cloud provider that uh, can silently rotate the key? Uh, 
yeah, do we know one of one of those uh, providers? Um, uh, I'm just want to know. Uh, what, sure. what does uh, what does KMS support? Um, let me see. Uh, I think they do it for symmetric. I think even Azure does it for symmetric. I'm not sure how it will work. It has to be like something. Either it has to be key name or key ID. One thing which use uh, which so, so basically both Azure and AWS supports automatic key rotation for symmetric keys. Okay. Like Azure support. Azure recommends two years, and I think AWS recommends like something like that. Two years. Both recommend two years for like automatic key rotation. So there has to be transparent because. For example, I'm not sure, like I don't, I, like for KMS, it's for sure transparent. I know that because for symmetrically, they automatically rotate because you don't need yep. to update the references, old ones. And I'm assuming same would be true for any other cloud provider because you won't want a user to go and update all the references after a year. Yeah. That's the same problem I have here. Like if someone supports it, like if let's say a certificate expires, for example, I'm just downloading a certificate from a hard coded location somewhere on my server. Certificate expires. I have to go and update all the key IDs or key names. Like it has to be constant. The rotation has to be transparent. So I think Shiva, that's the example, at least for symmetric. Uh, um, and asymmetric are different, so we need an example for asymmetric things. Right, uh, but like, yes. do, do you see any uh, assuming, and I, I'll have to go and check what KMS supports, but assuming a service can support that, is there a reason why would why we would change anything in this spec? Uh, uh, so uh, I just want to make sure that we don't make up scenarios. Uh, I, 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 at least I need to find out an instance that, uh, yes, we have a, a cloud provider that can silently rotate the keys with the same KID. I mean, like I, I'm not sure why we would like look for a concrete implementation as in we, we have an example with symmetric. We, we know that automatic rotation is supported and you can make the same automatic rotation support for asymmetric as well because you can transparently rotate the uh, signing keys if you are anchoring on roots your end-to-end -end verification like verification nothing breaks everything works right i think we have a case for we don't want to build anything that prevents automatic rotation I just posted two links on us of AWS and of Azure. I think both yeah, and again, like the examples that we are right now, we are just looking at uh, um, AWS and Azure, and we probably can look at HashiCorp too. The like you can assume there's there may be some example which supports, and even if it doesn't, uh, it's you can make this technically work. It's it's not that rotating it would break anything in our contract right that's what we are trying to prevent that if if a particular provider supports rotation we don't want to assume that it is static like i said i think we're okay with the current spec uh, i see that there may be requests for some providers saying we would prefer return it and describe. I think that's also a valid way of doing it and we can support that. Okay. Mm. Yeah, KMS documentation says supports key rotation only for symmetric keys uh, for AWS KMS. Uh, pardon? I looked at uh, KMS link that they sent, at least for AWS KMS, the rotation is supported for, uh, for symmetric keys. 
Yeah, it's supposed to measure you, but uh, asymmetric keys are different. Right, but like what, what I'm saying is, uh, assume that it was supported. Like I, I, I don't see the difference. Yeah, there. I understand. It, it, I understand. That's, so argument, uh, that's we're I assuming understand. that. I, I can give you one example. I'm not sure whether it's true or not. It's like document signing services, which are provided by multiple companies like DocuSign and all that, which I think they don't, they might do it for you. I'm not sure. It's my like, you know, those document signing is like you just provide them, create an identity for you, and they might do automatic signing for documents like PDF and other stuff. Again, I haven't verified it. So, but yes, that's one of the scenarios. They might be doing that. Because like they don't charge you per certificate, they charge you number of items you sign or something like that. So yeah. Shiva, like what are, what is different between rotatable keys for symmetric versus asymmetric? Uh, I, I was thinking, I, I'm I'm reading the uh, KMS documentation. Mm -hmm. Also, automatic rotation is, I think, one of the Azure feature. Also, the post is old except 2021. But Sorry, is the discussion, Milin, that uh, today, anyway, the symmetric keys are uh, supported in the world, but are we going to start supporting asymmetric? Or is it no, assumed it's, that... It's, it's... No, it's not about that. I think, hmm. I think we are trying to keep the plugin spec as flexible as possible. I think even if we don't have a concrete example of asymmetric rotatable, there's mm. nothing that technically stops anybody from implementing a, like, I, I don't see it as a big shift. Got uh, I see uh, from the documentation, it seems that AWS KMS can silently rotate a key using the same key ID. I think documentation is supported for, again, like, I'm not sure why we are indexing on what uh, AWS or Azure supports. We are just yeah. saying rotation is a generic characteristic that can be supported by a key, uh, whether symmetric or asymmetric. Yeah, I, I, I just want to make sure that there is a pro cloud provider that has that scenario. Yeah. Okay. So, um, See, wait, like, yeah. yeah, there probably isn't currently. Like, I haven't gone and dug into, but like, given that symmetrics supports it like like the intent is this right we said the key name yeah. key id or key name that is illogical and that is the logical name because it may be backed by one key or a set of keys you can rotate it etc and that that's what is kind of the guiding principle for the spec too okay so uh, okay so that that means uh, we will still put the uh, certificate chain in the uh uh, what's in the generate signature response. Yeah, sign, sign, uh, signing signature, right? Uh, yeah, the certificate chain in the generate signature response. Yes, generate response. And also, um, yes, about, uh, I just want to uh, request that we, if we need to keep the name of the key ID, then we need to mm -hmm. do extra documentation on it, saying that, okay, although it's called key ID, it might not be unique. Yeah, I don't mind changing it to key name. I want to collect some more feedback. Uh, like, 
if you can get feedback from, uh, I think I'll have to open a discussion on this and tag like uh, Steve, Kim, uh, Alping, Rakesh. Uh, I want to get get some broader feedback doing that ID to name change. I'm open to that changing it. Uh, just want broader feedback before we make that change. I will, I'm putting that down in notes. Uh, because it changes uh, changes everything. It changes the plugin spec, which is not really uh, customer uh, facing, but it uh, changes okay the CLI parameters. Yeah, it's okay to the CLI parameters. Because we, we are still not GA yet. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 I'm fine. I'm, I'm open to changing things and making breaking changes. Uh, yeah. I'm saying it will affect the customer experience as well, where the parameter now will change from key ID to key name, right? That is the, that is the main thing. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, uh, if we don't want to change the uh, uh, name of the field, uh, I mean the, the key ID, then we need to explicitly uh, document it, saying that okay, uh, when you invoke the plugin, you have to be uh, you have to be, be careful that the key might be changed. Yep. Okay. Um, uh, that's fine. I'll try uh, to issue one eighty-seven. Okay. I, I, in the notes I put, I'll open the issue. Yeah, yeah. Closing some, uh, closing as uh, some cloud provider may sign <laughs> to replace the key without changing the key ID. <laughs> uh, what ne what's next? <laughs> um, the next one was, I think that's why I kept that at the end, the sign, sign digest versus sign payload, passing yes. the payload versus hash. Yeah, so I think for we... that one, yeah, for, for that one, uh, uh, I think uh, uh, so the original design makes sense because uh, yes, uh, uh, for signing, I mean, not for the notation, but for the uh, for Go Cozy or for JWS, they have its own uh, issue with designing the uh, payload digest because uh, the to get the digest we need to, ha to hash. But uh, what kind of implementation should we use is a problem. If we use the Golang building one, then yes, there's an issue about the FIPS compliance. So uh, for that one, um, I have. Uh, this uh, this PR. Uh, I'm not sure if you can have a log. Uh, this okay. PR is trying to uh, let the go cozy to sign payload okay. instead of payload digest. Okay, that that would be great if we can drive that change because, like like I said, well, yeah. like one of the intent of why it is digest is because hashing falls under under FIPS and Go doesn't seem to have a strong cross-platform FIPS story, right? It is either, it seems like end users figure it out, build it on a particular, uh, build it against a particular version, et cetera. And yeah, that, so that, that is the question. If, if we can make this change, that, that'll, that'll be really good. Yes. So uh, I think uh, ARM folks will uh, review this PR uh, this week. Uh, so let's see whether uh, it can be merged or not. Um, yeah, if it, if it can be merged, then we are happy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think if we, um, I'm looking at, so you have the changes there and I think if we can give some background around why we that that might also help on like I mean if it if it really comes to a debate, you can probably yeah. give the background around FIPS. Uh, yes, uh, uh, if you look at the PR, uh, there's a link to the issue one hundred and okay. uh, uh, yeah, so that's the background. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. 
Uh, do we need to discuss any more on that? So I guess we're just waiting on the go cozy resolution of that issue, right? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, I see a couple of ones added by, I'm going to the actual list now. Um, Pritesh, do you want to cover yours? And there, there are a couple of them by E. I'll try to quickly address them. Uh, uh, define experience. Might, yes. Yes, for my you two might, items, yeah. meaning you, you can yeah. you can do it offline and comment in those issues. Okay, that sounds good. Thank so, you. all right. I think I um, I think you can uh, point my item my agenda next week. I think Nima is here. He might probably talk uh, about is, uh, bug fix. Okay, Nima is here. Uh, Nima, welcome to not really to. Hi, <clears throat> sorry I'm so late. Zoom kept crashing, and I finally got it working, but it looks like I'm like right at the end. No, it's cool. We we had a bunch of other discussions going on. Cool. Um, I'm just trying to see the list of people here, but I can't see. Um, uh, you can click participants. That will show you the list. Okay. Uh, hello, Nima. Let me just. Um, hi. Hi. <laughs> hi, Nima. Hi. Hey, thanks everyone Welcome. for the help the last few days. It's been really helpful um, getting feedback and made some progress. Right now, I'm just. Um, I think it's all. It's looking good. I'm just uh, now writing some unit tests for like all the different cases I can think of to make sure. One, I think the unit test will. Uh, confirm if my understanding of what should happen, like it'll bring that out. Because right, without the unit test, it's kind of unit test is a forcing function to make sure that what should happen happens. And if I've got any misunderstandings, that should also come out. So, yeah, we'll get that out in the next couple of hours. Yeah, yes. I think I wanted to make sure, like Shiva is here. I don't have a good grasp over that issue. But based on the feedback that was being given on it, I'm trying to get to the correct, correct one. At yeah, I think like one is... question I've I've got on there, which I haven't looked recently to see if it's been updated, was there was a comment saying that if under a certain condition we should give an error if the Docker content digest is missing. And I responded to that with. Like in the spec, I've never seen anything that says if that header is missing, we should give an error. But at the same time, if it's a head request and it's missing, then there's no way to verify anything. So I guess that's the one thing that's kind of outstanding. It's not blocking me on writing the unit test. It just means, you know, depending on what we decide is the right thing, then the unit test will have to check for the right thing. Right now, I'm just going to get write the unit tests and get them to pass. But um, but yeah, that question needs to get answered. Other other than that, I don't. I'm not really blocked on anything. Just, um, just just writing the tests, all the different cool. questions. Uh, yes, and I will uh, review your PR again today. <laughs> uh, thanks, Neva. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. By the way, uh, uh, what time zone are you? I'm in Seattle. Okay. So, I see. Yes. So it's. I think. It's morning-ish for you guys, right? It's about six. Yeah, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. because you walk like you are. You are not in Seattle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been I've been coordinating my time zone to be with you guys because I'm getting a lot of help from you guys. Um, so it makes sense for me to try and work in your in your time zone. Yeah. So I'll uh, be working throughout the day. That the the current PR, just so you know, the the next thing that I've I've cleaned up. Oh, the other thing that was requested is so that I break up the PR into two two pieces. That's been done. Um, no, so the next no. thing that's going to come out is mostly going to be unit tests. And if in writing the unit tests, I discover any problems with the logic, then maybe that'll change as well. So I don't know if I don't know if you want to. If you're busy doing other things, maybe you can continue doing the other things, and then when I push it, then you can do the CR. Or if okay. you have some time, I guess it wouldn't hurt if you do it. You know, just have a look at what's been done so far because it's not going to significantly change but it might change a little bit yeah 
Yeah. Cool. Sounds good. Thanks. Thanks, Nima, for chasing this. Yeah. Uh, like, I've been enjoying working on this. So. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And, and uh, yeah, thanks, Shiva, for supporting this. Uh, I think both Shiva and I think Fenman. Um, uh, I. Uh, Milia yeah. and uh, Nima, sorry, I want to ask a question about uh, the dog content digest in Orasco. Uh, I, as I see, this issue is uh, very close to resolved and uh, finalized, uh, I guess, this week. So do we mm -hmm. need to release, uh, do we need to uh, pu publish a fixed pack for Orasco uh, after this issue resolved? Uh, you know, yeah. this issue is, is very critical for uh, using notation and auras. Uh, with AC ECR, AWS ECR. Uh, so I think uh, I see uh, we have multiple users uh, asking for support in our community. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure if we need to uh, you, if we need to release a fix fix pack for Orasco. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. I think that was one of the follow ups after this discussion. Uh, once the fix is through, I think we need a patch patch release. And yeah. then we can take that patch release on on notation side update dependency. Yes, we we, uh, we need both. Uh, I mean, for Orasco uh, and uh, Orasci. Yeah, that's my understanding as well. So, which is why there's pressure on getting this out as soon as possible. Um, yes. Yeah. At least, uh, I think uh, this is this issue is quite important for users to try. Auras and uh, notation with ECR. Yeah. Uh, after we finalize it, we can inform all of those users that uh, they can try it, uh, notation and auras with ECR, ECR later. Yeah. Okay. And since since I'm here, maybe maybe the question can get can get answered here. The question that I've got on the PR. So if if the request is a head request, in which case there's no body, so we can't calculate a digest, but the server response is missing the digest, the Docker content digest header. Is that an error condition or not? Uh, of course it's, at, it's a error condition. Uh, okay, so uh, why we need to do a head because we want to get the digest of a tag. <laughs> yeah, 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 if we re request a head to a, a, a tag, then you don't return a digest. Okay, it, it's, a, it's a result failure, right? <laughs> okay, okay. So that I'm only confused because I didn't I don't remember reading anywhere in the spec saying that if that header is not returned that it's an error condition. Maybe is that not part of the is that not part uh, of the spec that defined somewhere else? Oh, I think it's a common sense because if it does not return a digest, then it fails its major uh, functionality. It's one of the requests, yeah. Okay. Okay, so I'll make that change as well then. Yeah. Cool, this is great. Um, any other questions, Nima? Shiva, any other concerns? I think you'll be looking at this later. Hey, Melinda and uh, Shiva, right? To uh, Nima's question, should we update the spec as well so that there is always the requirement uh, that we can go back and verify? Uh, I'm not sure which particular spec this is. This is the aura spec, Shiva. Yeah, I, I don't know. Does it belong? Is this an error condition that belongs to be that needs to be specified in the spec, or is it like Shiwe said, like common sense, which translates to it needs to be defined somewhere else, but it's not really part of the spec? I don't know. So I didn't pay attention to it, but I, I it seemed like you're doing a head head for a tag, right? And the response should contain a header with the yeah. edges. Thanks. So does this does the spec say the response in the response the digest content digest is a required header? Then it is pretty clear. I've never seen anything in the spec that says that that header is required. It just says the server should return this, but there's nothing saying if it doesn't return it and it's a head, then it's an error condition. And I don't know that may that... be something to discuss. She way the spec should say if it if it is a required response, then it should be marked with a must, right? Uh, uh, so, okay, so there are two specs. One is the Docker spec, that's the Docker HTTP v2 API spec, and another mm -hmm. is the OCI spec. Uh, 
So basically, uh, for the accountant digest, uh, the Docker spec always return the Docker content digest header. If it's, okay. uh, if we if the server does not return a Docker content digest, then uh, it's an error. Uh, that's for the Docker spec. Uh, mm -hmm. As you can see, yeah, the AWS ECR does not comply the uh, uh, the the Docker spec. Uh, but if we look at the OCI spec, okay, OCI spec allows that the server does not return a Docker content digest. Okay. Is uh, there an alternate header it, it, for the digest? Or is, is that the only header? Is there an alternate header for the digest or is that the only header? Uh, no. Okay. So, so, so in uh, the OCI case, if you don't return, then what does the client do? Okay. So um so for uh for the uh, for the get request, okay, uh, if you don't support uh, if you don't return the uh, the digest header, then we can calculate the digest based on mm -hmm. the body. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, uh, but for the head. What if it's for the head? head? Okay, if it had, uh, just let me uh, just let me check it right now. Okay. Let me check it. Because it just it just feels like the reason I didn't put that error in there, even though intuitively kind of makes sense. Is because I felt the minute I return an error based on that header, I'm already breaking the spec. Because according to the spec, I'm, I mean, it could just be my misunderstanding, but it feels like according to the spec, I shouldn't ever return an error based on that header missing. Nima, for my understanding, we return the error in or as client. Mm. Okay. But, right. The thing is uh, in or as client. But right now, the, the, the comment that I had is to return an error in the ORAS GUI library. So not so much the, the client, because I'm not- So basically, if, a, if you head and the server doesn't return content digest, then you return an error to the caller of the library. Yeah, that's, that's the last comment I had because I wasn't returning okay. an error ever. I see and a other comment, than... comment left by Sylvia yeah. on that ORAS GO issue. Mm -hmm. uh, Described the, the, the different scenarios. Yes, it does. All I'm saying is that uh, I was juxtaposing her comments next to the ORAS spec, and it seems like they're in conflict with each other. Maybe I'm wrong and maybe I'm just misunderstanding, but it feels like because Sylv Sylvia's comments make sense. It's just that it says to return an error, which also makes sense, but that just seems like it contradicts what the aura spec says. That's my only. Uh, it's not aura spec. Uh, I think it's OCS spec. So, uh, so oh. okay. So basically, uh, we uh, for the head request, uh, we need the digest. But if the server does not return the header digest, then how do we generate the descriptor? We can't. Yes, then it's an error. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and there's an so issue. From OCI, uh, so from OCI perspective, sorry, go on. Uh, for the OCI perspective, uh, uh, I mean, in the, uh, in the summarized uh, spec, I mean, in, in the summary, uh, the OCI registry supports head request to the uh, manifest uh, uh, APIs. Uh, however, uh, the spec does not specify the details how uh, the uh, the endpoint responds to a head request. Yeah, it almost seems like if the head doesn't give you what you require, you end up doing a get or something like that. But, so Shiwei, do you think do you think the spec is fine as it is, or do you think it needs to be updated and mention what should happen? Uh, yes, it, it, should, it should be refined because uh, uh, OCI spec is not very complete yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and also, uh, um, yeah, 
Yes. So because it says a should, that that means most registers should have returned the digest uh, uh, for the uh, for any request. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, for some uh, registries, uh, they don't uh, comply with the should. They they say okay, they are doing something special, so they don't return the uh, the digest. Yeah. Maybe we can do a fallback. That is okay if uh if um i mean it doesn't return it but we can calculate it then we just calculate it if uh, i mean uh then okay. that means we need to have a special logic in the uh in, in the resolve function that is if uh uh if head does not return a digest then we need to um to do another get request to calculate everything yeah. but is it, uh, is it if I, it's a, it's an edge case. I, I don't think edge, if you are, we'll fall into that edge case, right? <laughs> right. If, if is this work changing with OCI? Pardon? Is this uh, I was asking? Is is this work changing with OCI spec on asking them to clarify this? Yes, but anyway, it does not comply with the Docker API. Uh, I mean, the Docker spec. Okay. Mm. Oh, and and uh, another question is, if this if we do get the that header, the Docker content, and by the server, and it has some value, in Sylvia's comments it says we just trust it, and I put a question saying should we just trust it or should we verify it by recalcul if it's a get, and that header is present, do we just trust it or do we verify it against our own calculator? Uh uh, it's, uh, we're not trusting it, but we're not uh, verifying it in the uh, in I mean in that particular function. Uh, we are verifying it when we uh, fetch it using something called uh, fetch all or content uh, or con uh, content dot read all. So uh, there's other method that says take a descriptor and a pay and take a reader and it will read through uh, and uh, and verify the digest on the fly. Okay. So yeah. you're saying in the changes that I'm making, I don't need to do that. If I see it in the header, I yeah. just use it. Yeah, you just use it because uh, the the caller calls this function does not trust the uh, the the digest and the and the and the payload uh, by its own. So, so it they will verify on their own. So it, it, okay. it's pretty yeah. Right. Okay. So quick yeah. question, Shiva, for my understanding, I, I'm I'm getting what is happening at the ORAS level. But from the caller, like notation, yeah. Yeah. does notation, I'm assuming notation also, the, the registry integration that we did through ORAS, yes. that doesn't trust this header by default. It gets the, for example, image manifest and verifies whether image manifest digest matches content digest header. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Uh, just let me, uh, uh, just let me point to you to the right code. Okay. Yeah. Oh, just wait a second. Um, okay, I'm not sure. Um, I'm able to share the screen or not. Just let me share my screen. Okay. Okay. Uh, then what is the util what is the utility of this head request? Where 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 do we use it if we are gonna do the get anyway? Uh, wait a second. Just let me share the screen first. Um, sure. Picking up one, uh, this one, share. Uh, can you see my screen? Yeah, yeah, I can see it. Yes. So as you can see in the get block, right? Yes. Uh, there's a uh, there's a fetch all uh, utility from the uh, from from the ORAS go. So basically, uh, it will mm -hmm. fetch the, uh, uh, the the content according to this descriptor. So if the content returned by the uh, by the server does not match the descriptor, then um, then we just drop it and return error. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically, we do verification on the notation side, and yeah. also for the uh, I mean, there's a uh, yes. Uh, I think it's just a blob. It's just a blob. And just a question, is there any harm in doing the extra verification when we can? Uh, performance. 
Yeah, uh, that, that's the major issue. Uh, if we, we if we always do, I mean, do uh, hash multiple Similar. times. Yes, yeah. that's a common issue. Okay, yeah, that's just, the, no, just, yeah. Uh, okay, just not see. that uh, Orasco is very different because Orasco may be integrated into a service level uh, stuff. It's not just client. So uh, if we do a lot of calculation on the server side, then uh, we lost a lot of performance. And also we need to consider the security. And yeah. yes, uh, including the memory consumptions and uh, uh, network, uh, the network IO or disk IO. Okay, now that makes sense. I just wanted to know what the reason is and if it is performance, it makes sense. As long as, as long as we're not doing a check there, but we guarantee that a check will have to get done some point down the line. So yes. It's not gonna be a security issue. Sounds good. Do we have anything else to cover on this one? Um, not for me. The, the two questions I had just got answered. So I'll just incorporate that into the, my testing and a modification of the code. Uh, yes, cool. and I'll uh, review code again today. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. If you like, you awesome. can wait until I publish the next one. But um, next one should be based on what we just discussed. So um, yeah. I'll leave that up to uh, you, but I'll, yeah. I'll, I'm aiming on having another thing published today when I implement what we just talked about and the tests. Yes, uh, I think I should give you the uh, the review as soon as possible. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool, sounds good. I think uh, one thing, Shiva, that I noticed on that PR was, uh, you pointed towards conventional commits, right? For the messages. Yes. yes. That was a nice one. I, I wasn't aware of that. And I see that some of the more recent PRs on notation side also follow that. Even my most recent one switched to that one. Uh, sh should we kind of blanket adopt it then? Like till now, we haven't, we haven't followed. We have all different kind of commit messages. Okay. I think spec specifically the breaking norm breaking is really useful for a reviewer to understand yes uh, i think we should have a uh, documentation somewhere to uh, let the contributors to comply with the conventional commits and i feel uh, like this is this is probably something we could i mean it's a bit more work but through a git commit we could almost like a lint check that commits just instead of like basically if you Put the wrong format it'll just prevent you from pushing yeah that's why i'm doing it but given that it's been defined somewhere there's probably already someone's probably already written a git hook for it but the problem with that is you need everyone to like actually use that git hook but might be a might be an easy way to do it yeah i think for for now if we just capture it and like in the documentation uh, given we like we are still under development, the uh, contributors are a limited audience. But yeah, the the Git hook does make sense when we get more volume of contribute contributions. Mm -hmm. Cool. I think we we pretty much done on this topic. I assume we are also almost fifteen minutes over time. Uh, if anybody doesn't have any any other topics, then. We we're done for the day. Cool. Awesome. Cool. This Thanks, was... folks. Yeah, thank, oh, you. Thanks, thank you. Thank you, Seema. Thanks, Seema, for joining. Yeah. <laughs> See ya. Thank, thank you. Take care. Thank you, everyone. Bye. -bye. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Milan. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Bye.